I'm in Kansas City, Missouri to get to know Andy with Cut and Clean Lawn Care. The oh, I'm, I'm gonna interrupt him and share with you guys right now that it is hot. <laughs> so if you see the shine on my face, it's a little toasty. Yeah. much about your uh, your musical background I mm -hmm. know like you know I've seen like on Facebook and different things like you know you, you come up with like original rap songs and like rap battle type cool stuff yeah but I, I kind of know I've heard that there's a little more background to that right like you've been doing yep. this what your whole life kind of probably since I was about 15 years old I, I think I started getting semi more serious about it in like the late 90s like 98 99 I feel old saying the late 90s like geez. <laughs> But yeah, man, it's it, it's always been something I just enjoy doing, and I've been great with it. Uh, I started playing the guitar when I was like nine, so I've always been big into music. Like, dude, my headphones have to be the best. I love quality and sound. It's just yeah. enjoyable. But yeah, uh, growing up here in Kansas City, a lot of my friends, everyone's been big into hip hop, and I would watch them get into it. And I've always been able to just kind of freestyle and come up with stuff off the top, and it's just something I never really had a super big drive for it. was just, it became comical to me that these people that are taking it so seriously mm -hmm. weren't able to do it as good as me. Right. So I was able to take that and just keep, kind of continue doing it. But the majority of it, my friends pushed me into doing it more than I did. I wasn't super passionate about it, but it's always been something I've been really good at. You can still find some of our stuff out there. I've been, uh, we had a group, Clear Deceptions, with my friends when we were younger. Uh, I used to get beats from the same uh, beat maker technique that Tech Nine did back in the day. So I've been on nice. a lot of that stuff, but yeah. What uh, so I mean, any future plans for that? Or is it just something that's kind of like part of your roots Man, and just who you are and you kind of interject it here and there? It, and like, it, it's like that, dude. Yeah. Uh, I always have plans. People always want me to make different lawn care songs, but that's literally one of the hardest things to do for me <laughs> because it's 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 a very hard topic to make entertaining. Like, oh, yeah. I'm trimming the lawn, I'm mowing the grass. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's yeah. not as fun, but I love doing it. That's the same reason I made that for all you guys. Uh, Everyone in the lawn care community has been a pretty good part of my life. Everyone's inspirational. I've been able to take bits and parts from everybody. Yeah. And that's why I did that song. After that first GIE, I'm like, these people are all great people. I'm going to do a little song. Chant made that photo with everybody. Yeah. I'm going to make a song about this and just do a little quick one-liner here about everyone and stuff I see from their videos, like yeah. striping on the Toro, taking the notes, yeah. like stuff I was doing for you and whoever else. So if you've got passion for it or some sort of inspiration, it's always easier to come up with stuff. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what it turned into, but. That was an awesome song. Where, where can people find that? Like, you can find it somewhere? on YouTube. You can probably type in lawn care community rap. So it was a video that you yeah, made? Yeah, yeah, so I just made it, yeah, small videos on YouTube. Uh, some of my music you can find on Reverb Nation. If you type in Mind of Tragedy, not a lot of stuff on there. It's a lot of older stuff, nothing current, but yeah. The, ma the majority of the stuff I like to do, I just make it comedy. I like yeah. to be comical rap, entertaining, yeah. and it ain't got to be all serious all the time. So. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Some great background stuff, you know, that uh, yeah. that not everyone probably knows about. Because that's a big thing about it. Music is inspiration. So whenever those songs do come up, I had a song not that long ago I redid to uh, Lucas Graham's Seven Years. Once I was seven years. Yeah. I did one of that about why I started my business. I have that song in there if you don't know it. Talking about just getting up and getting out there and, you know, doing the things, just being about nice. it. Nice. But yeah, it's all about inspiration, man. The minute I get inspired by something to where I come up with a song, usually I'll do it. Yeah. So if something funny comes up or one of these haters on here decides to come at me, you're going to get it. I'm just going to let you know that. <laughs> it's coming. It's a pretty sweet, sweet setup there. Yeah, man, I love it. Like we were talking about off camera just for a little bit, man. A, a lot of us work so hard and forget about the little stuff, you know. Guys, don't do that. 
uh, some of you guys out there I know don't have you know families you're not married you may not have kids so I mean feel more free to you know spend your life working and make as much money as you want but to me man family means a lot my kid means a lot my wife means a lot but yeah this is my 2008 Triton I'm an avid fisherman I grew up fishing man I'm a big bass fisherman I used to fish a lot of tournaments when I was younger but this to me is just something else to make memories on man I get to take my kid fishing you know he gets to have those memories of hanging out with dad going fishing catching fish and stuff like that so to me this is one of my you know prized possessions for that reason man I get to make some memories get to keep enjoying the things that I love because in this day and age most kids are just inside watching YouTube <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying anything you know go subscribe and everything but uh yeah playing video games man when I was a kid we were outside playing baseball and stuff so I want my kid to know the outdoors and enjoy it and love it man so how uh, how often do you how often do you use this or I try to take out? I try to take it out once a week really no matter what I try to whether it's with my son, whether it's me and a friend, just, just being able to spend that time. I'm, I'm a big fan of the outdoors. Mm -hmm. I'm big into guns, I'm big into hunting, I'm big into fishing. So I like, it's kind of my peace, my revival, you know, being out there on the water, just kind of doing your thing. You know? how, how often did you go Rarely. boating before that? Rarely. Because, <laughs> yeah. especially I can give you a little insight on the job that I had. But when I was a supervisor, I was on call on the weekends, but not paid to be on call on the weekends. So I still had to stay here even though I wasn't getting paid for it. So it's kind of like they had it set up to where they're controlling my life and not paying me for oh, it. Man. You're on call, man. You can't go to Lake because you're not going to be able to get back to work. But right. you're not paying me to stay at home. So it's a lot of those conversations you have yourself. So I decided to make that life change. Take my side gig, which was lawn care, turn it into a full-time business to where I can have these opportunities to do these things in life. Yeah. And not feel like you're held down. You know? Right. So this wasn't your first trailer, right? You said you had a five by 10? No, man, and just like we were talking about before with information you'd like to give other companies, I had a bad habit of purchasing items that I have grown into instead of purchasing things that I'm going to grow my business into. Yeah. So I started off with a five by eight trailer. I'm like, I only need a couple more feet to be happy. So I went and bought a five by 10, which was a horrible idea because it's the exact same thing. <laughs> There's no difference. I don't yeah. care what anyone tells you. So then I was finally like, you know, I'm trying to grow this business. I want to have all my stuff with me at all times. So I bought this trailer. It's a Doolittle 2018 uh, 16 by 7. I can carry my entire business with me at all times. And that was a big headache, man, is running around with the pro stance all day, mm. coming back, dropping it off to grab the 36 and go do the rest of your stuff. It's yeah. stupid. Yeah. So if you do have the opportunity on the capital in your business to make purchases, dude, Buy stuff you're going to grow into, not stuff you've already grown into because you're always going to be getting new things, man. So in total, yeah. Well, so it's like five years in total that you've been yeah. like, in lawn care, like 100%? Like whether it's part-time and in full-time? Or you've kind of been doing this I, all I'd your I'd say life. at least, well, I mean, I've worked for different people and I did it. You know, like when we were a kid, you're trying yeah. to make money, be yeah. listening in the neighborhood and things like that. But taking it seriously, I'd say maybe three years, but I've been doing it for about five years, kind of like a hobby. It started out. I'm like, oh, I can make a little bit of money doing mm -hmm. this, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I started becoming more serious about it. So I've been learning and educating. And then it's like, you know, this is something I can do that can become a business that I can provide for my family with as well. So it kind of became that animal at one point. Yeah. Was there anything that, like, helped you along the way that you, that you uh, recall over the years that really helped give you, like, those either one or multiple, like, boosts? You know? Yeah. I'm going to go with two things. Okay. One thing is going to be YouTube, and it sounds real corny and cliche, but if you can find something that resonates with you, it's going to help you grow. So I found a couple people on there, and I'll name drop a couple, obviously. Everyone knows Geek to Freak Greg Chisholm. At that time, I'm watching a family guy. He's got kids. He's out there struggling. He's out there hustling. Brian Shame from Top Notch. He's another one, uh, another family guy doing his thing, trying to figure it all out. So watching those guys do what they were doing before he even bought equipment. I'm watching these videos and going, okay, this guy's doing this, this, this is how he's doing it. Okay, right. he's working, he's doing this, he's buying this, he's doing this. So you watch that stuff. The other thing that was a big drive for me to do what I'm doing is how miserable and unhappy I was at my previous job. I woke up every day going, I do not want to go to work. And that's a feeling nobody should have. Because if you spend your life waiting for, you know, Friday and Saturday, I think it's a Gary Vee quote, you better reevaluate your yeah. life because yeah. you're wasting a lot of it. So now, you know, I'm getting to do things I love. Obviously, there's stress. Right. It's a headache sometimes. Right. But it's yours. Right. It's mine. I'm in charge of what happens this day, yeah. not someone else. And that's something I like about it a lot, man. 
Future goals, I definitely want to get out of this house. I want to move. Family's grown. When we bought this, we didn't have a kid. At the time, we actually technically weren't even supposed to be able to have a kid, the doctor said. Mm -hmm. So we ended wow. up having our son, which is That's awesome. awesome. Dude, super awesome, man. So Hell yeah. How old is he now? Five. Yeah, super awesome. <laughs> so we're ready to get something bigger. Um, I just got a small little house that we bought, super cheap. Uh, like I said, one car garage. I need more space. I need more driveway space for all the stuff we got going on. Uh, business goals mainly is upgrading equipment because I'm still at the point that I really enjoy being a solo owner operator because yeah. I feel that way I have a hundred percent customer relationships so if the job's messed up it's on me it's not on anyone else so right. I don't have to worry about that call um, upgrading equipment uh, especially being a solo owner operator the more productive you can be your life's gonna be better you know about that too yeah. the fatigue you take like if I was just running walk behinds all day I would not be able to do nearly as much right. as if I had my standard Right. So it's always about trying to become more productive, more efficient, and even make more money. Finding new ways that you can, you know, always gain clientele or come up with new odd jobs to make more money, man. Yeah. So I, I, I used to do goals, like legit goals on a whiteboard. Mm. But now I'm kind of doing what we were talking about earlier at Blake's house. You guys weren't there for this, so you don't know that. <laughs> but we're talking about, <laughs> yeah, we're talking about when you, when you get that idea to kind of just go for it. So like I'm saying, I'm tired of using this 36. I need to get a 36 standard. So I'm in that mindset of saying, I'm buying a 36 standard this year. Right. I'm going to figure it out. What you got to do, yeah. Whether it's a company that wants to work with me or I work with them or I purchase it outright, it doesn't matter how I do it. It's, as long as I'm able to do it to right. continue making my business grow. Yeah. That's my main focus. Is. That's awesome. So let's. So so what do you got? Let's talk about this. Yeah. I still have the original Encore Premier Series Walk Behind 36. As long as you guys know, I literally started my business when I started doing it with this mower. Was it a great idea? No. <laughs> but it made me money. I'm not going to lie to you. I made money with this. This paid itself off in months. Not a big deal. But I wasn't productive. If I was just running this in my company, I would not be able to do near as many properties. But uh, as, you guys, as you've seen you know, coming around here, a lot of older neighborhoods. We have smaller gates. I have a lot of those small gates, so I still need to use this. i say there's at least eight properties that I have to use a week with this 36 that I have to use and they always come in you know great on hills and things like that uh, I got a little Troy built push mower that I literally have one yard that has the smallest gate in the entire world I have no idea why so I have that um, I like being serviceable I don't know if you guys are the same way but you know older client calls me hey I got a small gate I don't want to go ah no because I'm always looking for big properties I like to be serviceable so I still have this and it still does what it needs to do now the Gravely Pro Stance 48. This is my second one. I had the uh, 2013 with the ACI deck. Now I got the X Factor 2 deck. Uh, it's a great machine for me. The main reason I went with Gravely for me, I'm a big guy. I'm six foot 275. This machine weighs about 400 pounds more than the Skag V Ride does and things like that. So for hills and stuff, I need something that's going to stick on the ground and stick with me, and that's why I went with this machine. So if you guys are out there for you know, looking for machines and to buy machines, just make sure you do your research and get what's best for you, man. Don't listen to what I'm saying. Don't listen to what so-and-so is saying. You got to test the machines out and get what's best for you guys. Trust me on that one. What about work-life balance? Like you're talking about, you know, you have a five-year-old son, yep. wife, yep. Um, solo lawn care, mm -hmm. but your life, life is a lot better now, right? Because you're, oh, yeah. you're in control of your life. Oh, yeah. But still, there's a lot going on, like you said. So how, how do you balance that work and life, you know? Yeah, I just, it's, how do you it's find exactly, time to go on the boat? It's you know? exactly what you say. It's a balance. I, I set my schedule up to where I know the workload I can take and I do not take on anymore. Some people just, I'm going to get as much as I can. And, and that's cool. If, if I was like in my twenties and I wasn't married and didn't have kids, boy, you'd see me working harder than anyone else. But man, I know my kid, you know, you're going to grow up. Your mind's going to do what it does. So I want him to have as many memories of life being great. That way he grows up to be the best person he can be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want him having any regrets. Any of that stuff. I didn't really grow up having regrets or anything. It's just, I want to keep that going. You know what I'm saying? What's one piece of advice that you would offer to someone? There's a lot of things you got to take into example. I would never tell anyone to just take the leap. And that's a lot of stuff when I was talking to people like, man, I'm, I hate my job. A lot of people say, I mean, just, just do it, dude. Just go full time. Don't listen to that information because life is real. Okay. So if you're not paying attention to your insurance, if you're not paying attention to you know, your kid needs karate uniforms or t-balls coming up. Man, understand your finances. Understand where your money's coming from before you take that jump. Make sure you have all your ducks in order.
Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying just be careful. Because yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there listening to a lot of this information. They're like, this guy's right, man. I'm just going to go do it. And then they start doing it and go, man, yeah. what did I get myself into? <laughs> yeah. So just my main thing I would say to anyone is just make sure you got your ducks in a row. Make sure everything's good for you to take that, that jump, for sure. Business is and always will be there. I don't care how many lawn care companies or some guy right there going down the street with a trailer. There's more than enough work for everybody. Another piece of information I would say is network with local people. If you're a new guy starting lawn care business, don't be afraid to approach other guys that are solo with business. Some guys might brush you off, some guys might not. These are the guys that you're gonna need when you're trying to grow your business. Other people wanting you to succeed. So if your trailer's down, you got a flat tire, maybe that guy you made a connection with is gonna be there to pull up behind you and say, let's get this fixed to get you back on the road. Absolutely. So always be open, always be a nice person, man. Don't be a negative guy. There's a lot of people down there, thumbs down in everyone's videos and leaving negative comments. Those are the guys that are gonna fail. Be positive, man. Engage with you know your fellow human being, dude, and you guys are gonna succeed. There's no way that you can't, man. Gotta have a team. Everyone yeah. has a team. Yeah. Surround That's yourself with people that want you to succeed. That's awesome. For Thanks, sure. man. Yeah, I dude. appreciate this time. Heck yeah, man. Thanks. We're gonna have a good weekend, guys. Woo! It's hot. Yeah. Ha <laughs>